welcome to Shaftesbury, ancient Saxon town of Dorset. The first place I'm going to show you is a bar called Angola 76. Welcome to Angola 76. Slaunch There's live music at the weekends here and all the albums on the wall are for sale, so you can stock up on your vinyl collection. As you can see, this place is a little different. The reason it's called Angola 76 is because the owner, John, asked his teenage children whether it was trendy enough to do so, and they said yes. In fact, I think you'd have to travel a fair way indeed to find anywhere like it. It's also open late at weekends. Call it Irish time. Angola 76. Well worth a visit, and probably a glass or two of cider. This is the reason why people come here to Shaftesbury for the iconic Gold Hill. All over an ad, would you believe, that was made in 1973 for the Hovis Bread Company. It was meant to look like a northern town and have the feel of one, but the irony is it was made here in sunny Dorset. Now this is only relevant to people who were around in 1973. If you're under 50 and you want to have a wee look, there is a link down below to the Hovis ad. You may have noticed that there are no cars, yellow lines on Gold Hill. This is because Gold Hill is a conservation area. Even the owners of these beautiful houses have to ask permission for any changes to be made on the outside. If you want to find out any more info, luckily, there is a Gold Hill Museum. Having been in there myself, the voluntary staff here are extremely friendly and knowledgeable. So don't be afraid to ask tough questions. The good news is, it's free entry. You'll also find the Hovis bike here. And if you've been off Gold Hill and you've been busy in the Gold Hill Museum, you might be hungry and thirsty, and there's nowhere better than here. Here, it is unusual to see them cooking the food in front of you, if you wish. But the real gold nugget is the view of Gold Hill from the tables. If you want to come here in the summer, uh, between 12 and 2, you must book in advance, otherwise you just won't get a seat. And once you've stacked up in knowledge, had some lovely food to eat, it's time to go for a walk. And lovely people of the world, it doesn't get much better than this. This is another gem of Shaftesbury. The views are stunning.
This is an ancient Benedictine abbey built by King Alfred the Great for his daughter, Athel Gafu. But unfortunately, under Henry VIII's orders, Cromwell pulled the whole thing down. And if you want to learn any more information on Shaftesbury Abbey Museum and Gardens, you just come in here. It's four pound entry fee and children under 16 go free. Follow me folks, I'm gonna show you a quick route to another fantastic view. Taking a right here onto Lover's Lane. Follow me. And here we're going to take a left. By the way, in the summer, this house has a glorious display of wisteria. This walk is approximately only five minutes, but it's well worth doing, because you're going to end up here. Now you're at Castle Hill. It's called Castle Hill because there was a castle here. From here, you see three counties. Dorset, Somerset and Wilshire. Believe it or not, on a really clear day here, you can even see the Welsh hills. And if you get confused about your whereabouts, you can always use this as a guide. By the way, here's an oddball house that would suit Tony and I well. Tony can have the outhouses and I can have the big house. There is a snowdrop festival here every February and although the snowdrops have disappeared for now, they stay here in the ground as can be seen. Until I kick Tony off the sofa and down here with the mower. This is the old Trinity Church. It stopped being so in 1974 and it's now used for local businesses and Shaftesbury Scouts. The church tower here is the tallest point in Shaftesbury. However, it only opens up once a year on Gold Hill Day. So if you're feeling brave enough to climb up, all you have to do is pay a little fee and off you go.
One place I must tell you about is this boutique hotel called the Grosvenor Arms. Sumptuous surroundings and the best coffee in town, I do recommend it. And this is where I come to get an Irish town, in the beautiful Italian courtyard here, the Golden Arms. Now, if Tony thinks he can bring his bucket and spade in here, he can get knotted, because I don't want to be banned. My view of Shaftesbury for what it's worth is to go for a Dorset cream tea at the top of Gold Hill and then a gentle amble along the Abbey Walk to enjoy the views. I would say, however, if it's raining, to try somewhere else. The high street itself is full of independent cookie shops if you're so inclined. As for the nightlife, Apart from Angola 76 and a few other bars, there's not much stirring here. But that's grand, as sometimes in life it's better to be far from the madding crowd.